Welcome to an Alaska homestead where we're becoming more self-sufficient on a remote island in Southeast Alaska. So today we're finishing up our uh, our fire pit and we're going to assemble some chairs here. Well, that little critter's still alive. We'll take him back out to the ocean. I think so. Let's see. Oh yeah. Oops, I dropped him. Look out, buddy. Put you right there for right now. There we go. That little guy's still alive, so we'll put him on a rock that's uh, within the tide range and he should live still. Hi buddy, you're always here to help. You and Skipper are always here to help. You're always here to help, Skipper. Good job, okay. I need to put this rock right where you're at, sugar. There we go, how's that? I think that looks pretty good. Let's switch it around here and see if we can make this look any little bit better. I think that's it. I think we've got our fire pit here. So we'll shovel out the sand and then we'll um, get rid of the plastic tarp and uh, maybe excavate a little, make it a little bit deeper. Not too much. I mean, it's probably fine just the way it is. Yeah, we might just leave it the way it is. But we'll get rid of the tarp so we're not burning any toxic fumes. Uh, yeah, so there's our, there's our fire pit. Let me go get a shovel. All right, so we just got to scrape out some of this sand here. Then I'll go get my torch and we'll um, burn the center of this out and remove it. There we go. Let me go get my torch here. All right, we got the, uh, the middle cut out of the fire pit. There we go right there. Got a big old circle. Cut that piece out. Now we can throw wood in there and we won't be burning up plastic on that first initial burn. So that brings us to today's sponsor, Sylvam. Uh, if you remember a couple videos back when we were making the, uh, the picnic area out here, I said, you know what? All of my chairs are all busted. I mean, I've got two chairs back to back because these two are busted. And I said I needed some chairs. I needed to either make some chairs or buy some chairs. So Savon reached out to us after that video and uh, sent us two chairs to uh, try out. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get them all assembled here and uh, take a look at them. Just like real wood, Savon high quality Adirondack chairs adopt unique wood-like color technology. We chose white, but it comes in brown and black. So they're super easy to assemble. It's the most simplified installation I've ever had to do. The nuts are pre-assembled into the chair itself. All you have to mess around with is the 12 screws that it comes with. You just install those through the hole, then they screw into the pre-assembled nuts. It's an oversized chair. The dimensions are 38 inches deep, 30.3 inches in width, and 41.5 inches high. Another thing that I like is it's made out of recycled material. So it says we're supposed to put this on first. So let's get this humdinger assembled.
All right, so we got the first two legs on. That was uh, fairly simple. So, so how this works is, is, is they give you the screw, that's a hex, and then this has a, a flush nut inside of it. So you basically just line the holes up. I gotta go this way. And then it screws together really easily. That's, that's really nice. There was some thought that went into this because this one, this is going together really, really smooth. What's this thing? Oh, my chickens made a crazy sound. Oh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, there's some engineering going on to this because I mean, this is going together really simple. I, I could have gone and got a, a, a ratchet and used the hex set that I have it would go to go together even faster but they give you a an allen wrench here that comes with the kit so you don't even have to have your own tools it all comes as a kit together you just have to assemble and it goes together really easy and the instructions are simple too sometimes you get stuff and you're just like just throw the instructions away because they're absolutely garbage but these are just I mean there's only 12 12 screws that come in this thing well man that's super easy I'm loving this all right so this is always the challenging part is getting the last piece to line up so we'll see how well the engineering is on this I'm gonna leave these, just snug them up, but leave them loose. Cause you might have to wiggle it around a little bit. That's typically how end pieces go. Let me hit the other side over here. Oh well, that went in. Should have had these two in my pocket for the upper one. I'm gonna lean it forward a little bit and get my last two bolts. All right, I got my last two bolts here. Let's see if we can get these things lined up. That one, that one went in pretty easy. Let's uh, snug it up just a little bit. All right, that one's in. Let's try this last little section out here. Wait a minute. Shut the front door. Did that just go in that easy? Seriously. Really? All right. Listen. Let me come over here so I can. Let me come over here so I can talk to you. For for all the dads out there. And you know that a that a put Christmas presents together. And just other, you know, easily bolt on things. Sometimes they just ain't easy to bolt together. This, on the other hand, is one of the most simplest things I've ever had to put together. I mean, honestly, this, this is what every dad dreams of. I'm not excluding the moms. You know, moms out there that have put toys together, you understand the frustration I'm just giving it as a, from a dad's perspective. This was easy. I mean, literally, one of the e probably the easiest thing I've ever put together. Uh, float plane flying overhead. 
Dude, that was simplistic. Let's see if we can get a shot of the float plane. There you go, there's the old float plane. Buzzing the tower. Anyways, man, this was by far the simplest thing I've ever had to put together in my life. I got one more to do. They sent me two chairs, so I'm gonna put one more together and then and then uh and then that's it. Then I have to go and, and work on our outhaul a little bit because it's a negative 3.7 tide. All right, so here we are at our outhauls right now. These are the anchors of it. And basically, uh, we're just gonna extend our chain by like two feet. And we'll take this chain back and we can reuse it for something else. But uh, we've been having an issue with the line cutting into our pulley. And then it starts to fray the, then it starts to fray the pulley. I mean, the, the pulley gets worn and gets sharp and then it starts to fray our line. So uh, we're hoping that adding a little chain will also put a little more slack in the, in the, the line that goes up to the, to the anchors up on the beach. And yeah, so we just got to, get this stuff removed now and I'll let me take the pulley off first that'll make life easier we've got one five gallon bucket here and then we've got about a third of a 50 gallon drum and they're both full of cement and that's they're chained together and and they're this one's both the both of the um drum ends because we got two out here they're both sunk down pretty far so uh, luckily for us our anchors haven't moved at all get this thing broken free because it's been underwater for a few years now that one's super tight it's tight like a tiger where's that my favorite channel locks at there, there we go, go. Broken. sand is like lock tight mm -hmm. it does not like to give up the ghost easily There's Raven over here, digging for clams. Always trying to eat something that makes her sick. Oh my goodness. We've had a lot of throw up in the house lately. She loves the low tide seafood buffet. Come on, stay away from there guys. There we go. All right. There's one done, and then we just got to thread this back through here and reattach it. And we will be a go at this station. What? <laughs> there we go. So that gives us a little more slack in the line. Yeah, should be good now. We'll see. Uh, we'll check this out in, at next low tide and see if there's any more at the groove and the pulleys any deeper let's film it so we can we'll film we'll film it so we can do a comparison in a couple months so the scenery changes on these low tides you can see 
these two little reefs that just popped up. That's the why you have them chart plotters, so, because you never know. <laughs> yeah, if you didn't have a chart plotter, you'd just be guessing where, what the under the water looked like. So that, it's always nice to have a chart plotter or have charts if you know how to use them well. All right, and you see this right here? That's that little wear mark Raven. that I was talking about. And it's not sharp right now, so that's good. But the last set of pulleys that we had, it was sharp and it frayed our last line. So we had to replace this one. And we took our, we had two sets of pulleys on here just in case one failed. Uh, we took the second set off, hoping that that would rectify the problem. It did not. So now we are, we're adding extra chain and putting some more slack on and seeing if the slack will rectify the problem. I hope it does. So anyways, we also got some big news. Uh, if you see that right there, that is the tower that we just added for our radar. There's the radar. So in the very near future, we will be able to go out at night and in the fog and not have to worry about other running into other vessels. Cause we've had one close call where there was an open skiff and us, we were about, we were both maybe 20 foot in size, boat wise, but there was two guys in Mustang suits and they were hauling booty and we were, we weren't going quite as fast as them, I don't think. But anyways, when we saw each other, we were like, oh snap, we're checking in with my wife. I'm gonna check out the greenhouse now. <sighs> Let's see, we um, got everything in the greenhouse pretty much done. We have, look, we even have, my big tomato bush is even flowering. I guess that's a good sign. So these are all cherry tomatoes. And unfortunately, every single one of my cucumbers died. I'm very sad. Um, it still was getting- Too, too cold. Yeah, and um, we definitely need a stationary greenhouse, I think, instead of- A permanent one, because as you can see there, there air can get underneath that yeah and, and it, i've got it down about as low as i can get it and so it needed to be lower so next year we'll probably build a hard structure and i think we we can get it a lot warmer in there yeah so somebody told me that um, cucumbers are really hard to transplant or can be um so maybe it, it was because i transplanted them and they died or you know, it's still, believe it, we have, we're having a pretty big drop from 60 degrees in the daytime to 40 at night. So, and sometimes below that. So maybe that's what killed them, I'm not sure. So I'm a little sad. So I stuck some seeds in there and we'll see what pops up. I'm not sure anything will. What kind of seeds? Oh, I don't know. I put some cucumber seeds in there. Oh. I put some watermelon seeds just uh <laughs> <laughs> I know. Let's check out the rest of the garden. <laughs> this is my celery bed. As you can see, it's doing pretty good. It's a cold crop, so it should do pretty good out here. This is the first time I'm doing celery, so I'm really excited to um, see what happens at the end of the at the end of the year. This is the double hoop house, so it's got two layers of um, plastic. An outside and an inside layer. Yep. So over here we have jalapenos, peppers right here. And here we have regular peppers. So we shall see how it does this year. We'll see if any of these grow. Yeah. All right. This is a new one for us. Um, this bed right here, whew, you can tell it's hot today. It needs to be watered. Um, this bed was just full of some beets and some snap peas. We have some carrots in the front here with some um, radishes. And those are pretty easy to grow, so they should do pretty good. Over here is our um, spinach bed. And then in front is some kale and some lettuce. And once again, those seeds do pretty good. Um, it was pretty hot today, so we need to water this again and it should perk right up. Whew, same with this bed. Um, Good Lord. Is that bolting already? Is that what they call it? Or is that just the way it's supposed to look? 
<laughs> so uh, this used to be my um, asparagus asparagus bed and I was just having no luck whatsoever so I thought that I got all the asparagus up but as you can tell I did not so I have Brussels sprouts in here and with we have asparagus <laughs> with asparagus so um, we have some that are starting to come up um, oh, you know these Brussels, what are these that is a garlic oh. yeah so we'll just see what happens with this bed hopefully um, we can get some Brussels sprouts to come up and I haven't ever had any um, yield anything that we can eat so with asparagus no with the Brussels, Brussels sprouts. sprouts so I'm just not very good at Brussels sprouts and I'm not sure why there's nothing in here well nothing growing so this year once again I'm trying some garden um, garden beans and nothing has happened so far so kind of just experimenting to see if it will grow out here so far nada nada this is our uh, broccoli bed and um, I think it's gonna do pretty good they seem to be hanging in there um, I have some broccoli seeds that are coming up so different times we'll get something is that just beach grass in the back it is beach grass beach, popped up there beach grass, beach grass gotta go this is our cauliflower bed seems to be doing pretty good um, this is the first year we've used dirt from the island mixed with some compost so once again kind of an experiment to see if um, it actually yields something um, i put some fertilizer in here, some starter fertilizer to give it some nutrients. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens this year. Second cauliflower bed. As you can tell, I love cauliflower. I could eat that all up. Oh, we've got, we've got company. What are you doing, <laughs> Skipper? <laughs> well, we've got one on the inside and one on the outside. Yeah. Raven won't touch that fence though. <laughs> so what's this? This is our red cabbage and green cabbage this year. So um, once again, this is half island soil, half compost. So we'll see what happens. These two beds are our zucchini beds. Um, it was pretty hot today, so they look a little droopy. So I gave them <laughs> some extra water. They look droopy, so we gave them water. Yeah, give them extra water today. You got, you yeah. got a stick? Oh my goodness. So that's our beds for this year. Hopefully we will get something out of them. Oh my gosh, Raven, you got a stick? That's so awesome. Here, go get that. Anyways, look what I made. <laughs> I love them. I didn't make them, I, assem I assembled them. I absolutely love them. And they have a cup holder. You can't beat that. It's the they best do thing have about a cup it. Holder. Raven, come on. <laughs> look I at love that. It. You like them for real? This is great. They're way comfy. Yeah, it's a little warm right now to be starting a fire, but spring and fall or at, at night. It's gonna be, be nice. nice. Yeah. Yep. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye. Tell them bye, Raven. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, babe. Cheers to you. <laughs>